Hey everyone, welcome to our channel and welcome to a world exclusive demo of BMW Next operating system. And to learn all about this, I'm here with me, Christian Bauer. He's the head of BMW Group User Interface Design. Did I get it right? Exactly. Finally, Perfect. it took us three tries, but we got it right finally. <laughs> So first off, let's start with the name of the new operating system. What's the name? Because there's been a lot of debates. What's coming after OS 9? It's 10? A, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the oper BMW operating system X. X. OK, so X yeah. stands for 10. Perfect. OK, yeah. so a lot of things have happened since I drive 8.5 or OS 8.5 and yes. 9. Tell me what do we have here today, and maybe we walk through a demo of certain functions. Actually, that's the reason why we have this kind of setup, because it's uh, very important to understand the whole setup. Okay. It's, uh, it's a setup of four components that are, that are really important for our new system. The first and most important thing is the panoramic vision display, which is a pillar-to-pillar -pillar display um, as a reflection into the windshield. So it's not a standing display, it's a reflection. Okay. And therefore, it's, it has a certain depth and it's a really beautiful scenery that you can, where you can arrange different topics. And of course, there is our central display, which is um, especially designed for a driver orientation. It's closer to the driver and it's closer to the steering wheel and shaped in a really ergonomic shape. The third thing is our new head-up display, 3D head-up display, which is also advanced in, with a cutting edge technology. And the fourth part is our new steering wheel, also designed in a very special way for this new setup, having a, a new multifunctional system uh, working and is uh, also and a new design because we don't have a display in front of the, the steering wheel anymore. So you have the spokes in front right now because exactly. you can have the spokes. Exactly. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a second. But yes. since you mentioned the steering wheel on the screen, maybe one example talked about is off camera. You mentioned how it's easier right now to reach from the steering wheel, the exactly. screen basically. So they're quite close together in an actual production series car. We can see right here, but that was the idea, right? Yes, exactly. Really wanted to emphasize the reaction possibility for the driver to react really quickly. Quickly to get to the screen. Yeah, to the screen. So that's the reason for this angled situation. We got, got as close as possible to the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And on the right side, we don't spend too much display surface because possibility for the arm to reach the display. So gotcha. we can cut away there. But you don't need. Sure. So now before we move into the details about the operating system, was the screen design, the layout, the shape, was it function follows form or form follows function? Actually, design and ergonomics, we decided both together that could be a, a distinctive design, okay. which works out and is totally different to everything else. It's not a tablet style exactly. that you see a lot in we, the industry today. We didn't want to copy anything. We okay. wanted to make it better. And in this case, we asked ergonomics, what is the best shape? What, mm -hmm. what do you need and what can we enhance? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we saw that this is um, something that really fits to BMW because it's, it has a dynamic shape. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually an open angle on the, on the top corner and it's tilted to something. So it's already in a speed design, okay. um, better than anything else. Sure. So <laughs> let me ask you a follow-up question there because that's interesting. How do you decide what's the right size in the car? Because we've seen yes. this very large curve display which we thought that was the right size but now clearly this is different. How did you make that distinction? Okay, this is the right size, this is what we need. It's enough to display all the information. Yes. There are certain factors that lead to this size. Actually, of course, if you want to uh, emphasize the panoramic vision, you need to go lower the bottom corner of the panoramic okay. display. So that's the, uh, defining the top corner mm -hmm. of the display. Okay. The left side, of course, is as close as possible to the steering wheel. The right side is actually the, the right end for uh, ergonomic reach. And the low end is also uh, something where we said that is given for content reaction. So okay. you need to have a bottom line, which is also pretty easy to reach, where you have your main functions. That's the bottom line that you see on the bottom here. The climate control and media navigation, that's a really quick jump in. Mm -hmm. um, and they need to be also in a very easy uh, reachability. So there's a bottom corner. If you go lower, you have to look lower and you have to reach lower, which is not really good for distraction. Understood. And actually, at the last point is, of course, if we uh, want to have a best touch interface, the icons that you have on the display needs to be as big as sort of necessary mm -hmm. um, that you can touch it with an easy touch. I, I mean, if you go here and you, you just you want to touch here, then it, this also this sign needs to have a distance from this sign mm -hmm. so that you, 
not automatically touchable. It's like our smartphones, right? You always have to exactly. have this white space between certain items without trying exactly. to activate the wrong function. Yeah. Understood, got it. So basically, you've probably done research where you know how big that you know circle or yes. square around the thing should yeah. should be understood. Now, walk me through you know the design a little bit. I mean, not design, maybe the yes. functionality. Maybe show me what's what's cool about this. Yeah, actually, um, probably we start with the display because we stand here right yeah. here. What is probably uh, pretty cool, and you know it from the current uh, generation, mm -hmm. personal uh, favorite uh, widgets sure. actually. So that's uh, pretty, also pretty close to the driver. Mm -hmm. If you can, you can also swipe them up so that you can so vertical, and horizontal. vertical, exactly okay. vertical to uh, to show another mm -hmm. um, widget. And here you can also swipe horizontally mm -hmm. if you want uh, to dive in into another um, information in this category. Sure. Uh, so that is pretty and easy. Uh, we figured out that um, uh, radio and phone is actually, or uh, music and phone is uh, the most important uh, stuff that the customer wants to know mm -hmm. besides the map. Yeah? Right. So that's, um, we jump in there, but you have the possibility to swipe and put your own widget there. Sure. So that's, that was my next question. It's customizable, so you can customize yes. that. Yes. But then you also have a widget I saw in the previous screen, and yes. you've seen it already. You get suggestions based exactly. on AI functions that the car will learn from you. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. Understood, perfect. So now I see that you've done a lot of work on the icons as well, so the iconography yes, of it. the numbers were pretty important to okay. change. Um, we wanted them also to look iconic, so more BMW side. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the same time, um, here also, we have to look that it's recognizable and understandable, yeah, understandable so, pretty quickly. So quick. legibility, I guess. Yes, okay. exactly, exactly. So there's a certain size, a minimum size that mm -hmm. you can have a, a display. And at the same time, probably that's also with everything that is digital. If you have too overwhelming uh, or too complicated icons, then you mm -hmm. don't understand them. You cannot really interpret what does it mean. And mm -hmm. so. Uh, we also looked at, on a design which is very, very simple to understand so, and okay. not too much fancy stuff. So easy to understand and easy to reach. That's, okay. That was actually the idea. Got it. And last point, on the left side, I see this, you know, vertical plane, basically. Are those necessary items that you need to display due to regulations or those things are also customizable or function awareness? Let's pull it that way. Actually, they're, they're not customizable. They are reactive, actually. So okay. no, uh, depends on if you have the lights on, if you have the parking brake on, they will, um, they will add they will on this side. Mm -hmm. um, and they will, it's, it's of course necessary uh, as a like, regulation that you have to say uh, for the customer, uh, display the, for the customer that the light is on. So there mm -hmm. are regulation infos, but at mm -hmm. the same time, we say everything that you have on this display is also touchable. Which means if you want to adjust something in your light situation, you just click on that button and you can open the menu for the light and you can see inside the menu. So it's also mm -hmm. something you can use right away. Sure. Is there a scenario where when you start up the screen, you can change the map in the background to something else? Like let's say a photo of your dog yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. use your personal picture, for example. Okay. You can use another background. That could be background. a startup screen. That could be a startup okay. screen, yeah. yeah. Understood, okay, that was the question, perfect. We, we just start with our cars uh, with the map because we know from our research, most of the customers use the map as a background. Because they need to get somewhere. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's mainly the case. Exactly. Okay, the your boss is calling. Oh well, yeah, Everybody's boss, boss really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very cool, so we already seen something that we're supposed to demo, that's cool. So now we have this cool display here, but we have the panoramic yes. vision. So let's, let's explain this to people that never seen it before. Let's assume that nobody has seen it before. Yes. How does it work? Because a lot of people People think that it's like a projection from somewhere, from the top, a camera, but it's really not. So maybe you want to explain the technology a little bit? Let's start with the, the driver access. We want that the driver has every necessary information at mm -hmm. the first glance. We categorized actually and made a grid. On, you see on the left side, there's a tile um, that gives you the info of um, driving assistance. Okay. Yeah, so uh, there's a special information set only in this tile. Then you have the right tile where you can see like information about the battery status, the range mm -hmm. and all that stuff. That's something related to your car status. Okay. Yeah? And of course, in the center between those tiles, you have the most important information, the speed or the parking situation or the drive situation. It's something that is necessary always to see at the center. Gotcha. So maybe this is a good point because we can show right now the, the, the steering, even though yes. that was supposed to be last. Yeah. Because you see this new design, essentially now you can actually do this spoke right there because it's still exactly. visible from behind it. And before you weren't able to do it because clearly the speedometer will be right there. Two benefits actually. The first benefit is that the spoke actually points to the center of the view where you or have to does. look. There is always something 
something like that. You yeah. know, all the lines <laughs> just, get a point to something. Exactly. Okay, that's got BMW it. style. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the first thing. And the second thing is actually because you don't, uh, we could we could do a cut between the steering mm -hmm. uh, wheel and the the multifunction areas mm -hmm. because then you have the possibility to move them on the right place so that the okay. thumbs are always in a perfect position so that you don't have to take the, the hand off to adjust and to reach um, a, spe a special button. Sure. You can uh, dearrange them actually mm -hmm. because you don't have to fix them with one axe. The axe is in the, in the vertical, so we have two benefits from this new situation. Got it. And I'm assuming in typical BMW design style, the angle of all of this matches the angle of yes, what's on the screen. Okay. Exactly. So we <laughs> exactly have, the same angle. <laughs> it's, it's exactly the same okay. angle. It's one angle that shows to the to the point where you have to look at. Actually, it's the street, and that's uh, we want to emphasize that as much as possible. Sure. So before we go to the next demo of the panoramic display, yes. tell me how is the information portrayed there? Actually, it's uh, pretty cool because it's not a standing display in front of you. So it's, it's a projection. Okay. And that projection has uh, the the positive benefit that. Um, actually the picture that you see feels like it's standing a little bit in front of the windshield so it's uh, um, it's actually a projection which gives a 3d dimension to okay. it that Very makes cool. it cool to look at it's also really precise and has some depth into it so it's uh, for a designer it's actually the coolest thing because it's kind of magic very cool okay so walk me through the next thing uh, yes so probably important is the right side of the panoramic display okay we have now the possibility for each customer to personalize their view okay so what you want to have no matter is it, if it's um, much or less info than than before you can arrange it for yourself that okay. means we have six uh, special places you can see them here mm -hmm. and you can arrange everything that you see see here in the display you can arrange that and put it on the place that you want okay. yeah and therefore you can arrange your personal dashboard like in your laptop or whatever yep. it's something that you place on top so that you can si decide by yourself which is the most important information that i want to see next to the driving information Understood. it's pretty cool and if yep. you don't if you want to see less then you can take it out again and you can derange it whatever you like and i saw earlier that we reduced the, the panoramic vision quite a bit like the right side could be turned up what's the minimal or the more minimalistic scenario like it's mandatory only to have the speed actually it's also the range is something that so we have range. to and also the driving assistance if you're in a park situation or something okay. like, there need to be a certain info so about so the, three tiles you need to exactly. have there at all times the, the, uh, the part of the driver is from the left tile to the right tile, and actually these parts we have to show every time. Okay. The rest cool. you can arrange or um, you can take off and uh, whatever you like. Yeah. Okay. Show me another cool feature. Anything else that um, you're very proud of? <laughs> it's actually, not easy to pick your favorite yeah, child. Yeah, there's so many things. <laughs> <laughs> favorite child, you have to pick it now. <laughs> okay. Probably we jump into the modes, which okay. is probably a very, very cool feature. I'm assuming there are quite a few. We believe that it's um, important that we have a combination of many things to make an experience really cool. That means we have uh, sound, the car settings, light, and cool uh, graphical interface. All together, if you change that, then you have an experience and we can support your driving situation with that. We decided by ourselves to have four specific modes, uh, the sport mode, an efficient mode, of course, to drive efficient, a silent mode, what we just talked about is to reduce the content and if you want to drive very, very long on a, on a street and you don't need any uh, more info than the driving speed, then you can turn off everything. And of course, we need a personal mode. Okay. And the personal mode is something that we can, can configure even, even better than before. Um, so, of course, you can set your driving settings, uh, steering settings, and you can do on top even more. You can design the interior more than before. With the color wheel, you can choose the interior color and the change of the whole system color. So also the, the, the whole system is with your preferred color is changed and therefore you can create your personal atmosphere that you want to have. Gotcha. And I was saying the image is where you change that you know, startup image if you want to. Exactly. Got it. And on top, you can arrange your personal photo also as a background picture. That's okay. something that, that is also pretty new. Very, very cool. And it's got, I can see the auto and dark light mode as well. The very important mode for us is the sport mode because ultimate make driving, driving machine. Ultimate driving, exactly. <laughs> uh, we have designed another sport mode, very which cool. you can see here. Actually, um, many things happen at the same time. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> You reduce uh, content on the display, you have on the uh, panoramic vision, you have uh, new graphics that, uh, that, can, that are linked to your driving. Um, that means you have sure. a power meter, you have a G meter, and you can also 
switch to another side that's also pretty cool with a swipe and you have um, more specific information. We also changed in, in a very specific color. It's actually the color which we uh, ha have chosen in the past uh, as the most important color uh, for, for sporty situations, which we grabbed out of um, plane uh, jet fighters, actually. Okay. They use this color, especially this color, uh, because it has the best contrast situation. So you can judge very, very easy in mm -hmm. every situation where you are, what you want to read. And yeah. we said, we, let's take back this color because it's very unique for us. It's very cool too, yeah. yeah. Love it. The head-up display is one component which is additionally to the panoramic display. It is a display which shows your current position as arrow and showing in the line of sight exactly where you have to go. It shows every street, every corner, not overwhelming, so it's not too much information. Mm -hmm. It's only the necessary information reduced to uh, simple graphics. That's, that was our intention not to be too complicated, so to understand it right away. Every information is linked also to the panoramic vision display. If you are in, in a guided uh, situation, you see the color is arranged that uh, the whole car knows, or you as a customer know, mm -hmm. knows that the car is guiding you right now. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a cool situation because sure. uh, the most inf important information is on the street. The second information layer is more additional things that you want to know, but mm -hmm. you don't have to know right away, and that's in the panoramic dis display. And if you want to change something, if you really want to interact, then you go back to the display. That's okay. actually the hierarchy of our display order. Understood. When will we see this in production? So it's coming with new A-Class for small as exactly. well. I'm assuming sometimes next year, when yes, the first car rolls 20, out. 25. Customers will ask, can I get this in my car? I'm assuming it's not going to be able to be rolled out in existing cars. You'll have exactly. to be brand new products. Exactly. Okay. It's but it's not limited to, let's say, just new classic cars. You could have a car in the future that will say it's maybe gasoline, but here's this interior design that could have something like this potentially, right? So it's yes. not just limited to EVs. Because that would be the one no. question I say. It's no, not no, no. just EV. Yes, it's not EV, no. And, okay. And we start with the Noe Classic and we will sure. roll out the system. Actually, it's important that we have the actual displays together with the system working in, in, in the new cars together mm -hmm. that we can give uh, the customer the, f the whole potential of the system. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So final question. When I did a demo a few months ago, there was an option to customize my own iconic sound. Will you still get that? So when I accelerate, I have a specific sound or that's something that was just more of a demo? Actually, we have specific sounds in the mode. So we okay. start with a new sound uh, for in driving modes with the Neue Klasse. Okay. And we uh, differentiate them from, from modes. You can um, have a personal uh, um, a sound and in the sport mode, for example, there's a special sound which is linked to a more dynamic feeling, yeah. actually. But can and you customize the personal one? Like you, I, I remember dragging like we, on the screen. Ah, yeah, that was uh, done in the show car. Actually, okay. that's uh, a vision for us in the future okay. in the to future. reach that, uh, yeah. that in, cool. in our cast. Yeah, that's actually, cool. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, Christian, thank you so much. Really appreciate the insight. Uh, I look forward to seeing this. I guess by the time they see the video, it's CES already, so everybody <laughs> yes. will see this. But um, I look forward to actually trying in an actual car next year. So thanks for the explanation and we'll see you, you soon. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.